ready for your attendees to hear you, press the Start Broadcast button on the GoToWebinar control panel. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, Don and Kelly. You'll have to unmute yourselves. I unmuted you, but you then have to unmute yourself. <clears throat> Hello. Hey. Let's see here. So we'll be waiting a few minutes. For everybody else to join. Hey, Don. Hi. Ugh, I'm pushing mine back. The farther back it goes, the better I feel. I decided not to have the wine bottle showing in the background today. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. <laughs> so, Don, while we're waiting, um, be sure at the end I'm going to put in the chat box a link to the evaluation. So be sure at the end of the, um, the presentation, all the presentations, you'll do closing remarks, evaluation, um present draw, drawing prize opportunities um but the um link to the evaluation will be in the chat box okay so i'm, uh, I'm nervous oh you'll be fine it'll be fine and if you need any help we'll jump in if you stumble or anything we're here to support you okay don't worry about it we got gotcha. you <clears throat> Also, um, just a FYI, and the handouts is the agenda. So if anybody's looking for handouts, um, I'll watch between Eugene and myself. We'll watch the chat box. Does my background look too cluttery to you guys? No, you look fine. Are you sure? Everybody's got such a nice background, and mine is like my house. <laughs> the contents of my house. <laughs> You're all right. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Ashley. Hi, guys. Hi. The camera's all on, is it? Click right here. Hi, Ashley. Hi. No, nope. sorry, I couldn't figure out. I haven't used Go to Meeting in a while, so I wasn't sure if I. <laughs> Unmute and stuff. How, how do you turn on the video? Ruth, um, there where the little camera is. Can you see? There you are. Oh, I see you. Perfect. Oh, you see me? Like, don't see I myself. See so that's fine. <laughs> oh. Who's the other person that's black screened? We got Ashley. This is Tom. Wade. Huh? Sorry. Oh my gosh. Is it Rachel? Yeah, that's me. This is oh. Rachel. Um, You're not showing up on my attendees. Yeah, me neither. Never mind. That's weird. I can hear you, but I don't see you on the list. I don't either. Yeah, maybe I'll just try joining again. <laughs> I see you soon. <laughs> Black screen. Okay. All right. So, Ruth, I. Um, I think yeah. you have your video ready to go and okay. um, either myself, I'm going to see if I can get as soon as Richard gets on or not Richard, uh, um, Eugene, Eugene will play it because he's got better internet than I do. Um, I just right. make sure he knows where it is. Hello everyone, sorry about that. I had to get my situ my uh, situation set up. My uh, Your situation thing. situated? Yeah, my significant other is on the phone because she's working from home also. So she has to answer calls. So I had to set up an area where there won't be no noise. So <laughs> that's where I'm at. 
Can you share <laughs> your your um screen or your video? Sure. Yeah, I'll do that right now. And I don't see you on the panel list. You must have signed in as an attendee. Yep, Deanna and Richard. Which is fine. Richard or Eugene, you were supposed to sign in as me, remember? <clears throat> You're supposed to log in as myself as Tinka. <laughs> With my youngest daughter. This is my right hand. <clears throat> there you go, waving at us again. Dawn. I know. You know what? I I have fruit back there, and I think it's been yeah. sitting there a little too long. <laughs> but I hate to throw it out because it it's fruit. That's right. <laughs> Rachel, I see that you're on, um, but I do not see you're muted. You have to unmute yourself. There you go. Hey, everyone. Yeah, I don't know why. So if a webcam. To the top. My webcam. To the top. Um, there you go. There you go. All right. All right. Hi, everyone. Sorry. Eugene's going to join as me because I'm going to make him an organizer. To We're going to have a video that's played first. Um, so Deanna, are you on as well? I think you're an attendee. Can you unmute, please? It is on mute. Oh, there you are. So how are you going to show the prizes? Do you have pictures of them that we can put in the chat for the door prizes or what did you do with that? They're in that folder. I sent them. They're sitting in the folder. Okay. I have the folder. Let me find it. Eugene, as soon as I find this folder, hold on just a second. It's in the prevention program folder. That's the screen. Drawings. There we go. Okay. I will, um, Eugene, do you want to, or Don? Do you want to show the door prizes? Like pick the first one and say, this is the door prize for today. Or do you want me to load it into the chat box so people can see it? I think load it into the chat box. What do you think, Eugene? Check. Can you guys hear us? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Can you guys, you can hear my husband in the background? Okay, I'm going to tell him then. Yeah. I told him 20 times already today. Hold on. So the blue light doesn't. Okay, Eugene, I'm going to go ahead and make you the organizer, not just the presenter, but the organizer. And you should be able then to show the Start Roos video. And let me go in and make you the organizer. Are the you are the organizer? Let's see. Yeah, you are the organizer already. So Eugene, can you see up where you show your screen? There's um there's a big um Tinka. Button. Tinka, his audio isn't working. Oh. So he can't even hear you and he uh, it looks like he signed off. Okay. Well done. Then you're up next. <laughs> okay. You the what do you want me to do? I'm going to make you the organizer. And when oh, gosh. You, you can do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I help you. So <laughs> what I need you to do is where you, you know, where you go up and turn on your mic. It has the camera. It has where you can start showing your screen. There's a big, large button that shows, that says show your screen, and there's a down. Yep. So where? Um, where it says stopped, no one sees your screen. It says audience view 100% sharing. Under sharing, hit that down button under sharing. And then there's a big, um, you know, like push play to show your screen. Yeah. And then there's, it says show your screen and then click the down arrow down there on it. Yep. 
And it says uploaded videos, Lady Ganja, Nizla Story, MP4. Ganga. Yeah, I'm sorry. But do you see it? Uh, I see what you're talking about, but when I'm clicking this, the down arrow under screen, mm -hmm. it, it's not doing anything. Even with you as it, an organizer, huh? It says waiting to view Tinka's screen. Okay, hold on just a second. Let's make you presenter and see if that would work. Okay. I'll try to go show screen and see if you can see the the video. Yep. Yep. Okay. I see it. Can you push play and show your screen and let's see if it works, please? <clears throat> Are you, can you guys see my screen? It's black right now. Should, are you, did you push play? Oh, we it's lost. It's playing. We don't Shoot. see it now. Okay, hold on a second. Okay. <clears throat> what about now? It's black. It probably is starting. So give it a minute. No. Hold on a second. No, it's not, it's not going. Okay. Um, stop sharing. I'm going to go ahead and um, make myself the organizer and I can do it. I think. I hope. I did it yesterday. Uh, can I, okay. I am, I am stuck. My, can you hear me? Uh, yep, Eugene, we can hear you. All right. So with this one, I can go in as audio. With the other one, I can go in as video, but you can't hear me or I can't hear you, you all. Hmm. Okay. Um, just go ahead and sign in as um, your regular self then, and I will sign in the video. Make sure that works. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, it's going to have to work. Yeah. yeah I hope so. Okay. Change presenter. Presenter, show my screen. I, I am going to hold on just a second. Thank you. 
Hang on just a second. Movie guys over there. Can you see my screen now? Let's say Great Plains Partners and Cancer yeah. Conference. Okay. No, you can't see it? No, that's that's not what it says. What's it say? You can see your files. We see the, fi the your files, drawing, red, white, black, Pendleton bag. Okay. Pendleton laptop, brown and orange and turquoise, Pendleton something rather okay. for prayer. All right, hold on. All right. So we are going to show my other screen. Let me get rid of stuff here. Oh, somebody's cussing. Well, that was probably me. I said, shoot. <laughs> All right. Can you see my, what do you see on my screen now? Nothing. There oh, there's, there's your cat. cat. Okay, great. All right. Now. Don? Don, can you hear me? Hello, I can you hear me? Or mute you. What? But Tinker, you might need <laughs> Yeah, I put the video out to be uh, uh, you got a feedback loop. So because you're playing the audio and you're not muted, then your computer's replaying that audio that it's hearing itself. So just try it again, but mute yourself. Okay.
I will get up and thank you, Alexander. I will make sure that I'm muted. And um, Don, you'll introduce the video and then I will play the video. I'll back up to where we were at and to the beginning. And we should be good to go. I'm going to back it up now. I think I, I would just a bit. It's slow to begin with, so I no, would let's play the part. So. Can you guys hear me? Oh, okay. Can you guys hear me now? I can't get it back up to the beginning or even close to the beginning. Can you exit it out of it and then do it again? And then just pause it where you want it to play? Stop showing video. Okay. Let me start showing video again. Let's see if it'll start from the beginning. It takes a little bit to load. I'm going to mute myself, and then as soon as I can, I'll stop it and pause it. And then one third presenter who passed to facilitate. Okay. And where am I find those? Are there going to be uh, questions in the chat box, or is it going to be Can you guys hear me? I keep getting muted. I know I can hear you. You also announced that um, uh, attendees can pose questions in the chat box to use the chat box, and then at the end you'll read the, the questions and so that Ruth and Alexander can. Hey, Don, so I got full rows. I can go and um, ask questions if you want. Uh, yeah, because I'm I don't I have no control at all. I'm so okay. out of control. <laughs> all right. We have yet. You, you able to had the video? Are you able to play the video under show where it says show my screen? Show where it has the push play button and if you click the down arrow to the videos. Are you able uh, to give me, that up? Give me one second here. Let me um pull that part up again. Video so that I'm so I'm looking on my dash Tinka and I have um webcam dashboard attendees pull question handouts. Mm -hmm. Okay, under sharing, click the down button. So there's audience view, and then under sharing, there's click the down button. 
huddle up here. Yeah. Um, let me see here. They're bearing. There's what? Click the down button. Yeah. Click the button for sharing to okay. open it up. And it says. Yeah, it doesn't. Huh? It doesn't give me an option. Probably until I share. If you want me to share my screen and then try it out? Yeah, I do. Hold on. I'm going to make you the presenter or okay. organizer. You are the organizer. We're both organizers. Okay, so I'm going to stop showing my video. And when I do that, it's going to take a minute to load again. Oh. Um, it'll take a minute when we start to load again, you guys. So we'll just have to do that. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go to screen. I'm going to go to the uploaded videos, which is the Lady Ganga. Do you see it? <laughs> yes. Okay, play it because sure. I think it'll work better on you. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Um, I'm afraid my. I'm afraid my internet will go out because it's already glitching. So you have it. Um, you go ahead. Eugene will um, start the video for you. And Ashley and Rachel for evaluation. We're going should we're going to put it in the chat box. The link to the evaluation. I'll um, I can do that. And we'll do that when we get close to um, right when we when Don starts doing closing remarks and talks about the evaluation, we will um, do that. And I will put um, the first door prize in the chat. I think I can do that, or we'll just if it doesn't work, we'll just say we have a nice Pendleton bag. That will be a door prize um, for the evaluation. Yeah. Um, for our presentation, we put in there as well, like if you have questions to put in the chat box, is there going to be someone to facilitate that question and answer part, or do you want us to do that? Um, I think as presenters, you can do that, or Eugene can do that for you. He'll mute and unmute sorry. everybody. Do that again. Okay. There I'm sorry, Ashley, can you do it again? Yeah, um, so for our presentation later, we put like in our slides, if you have questions, so put them in the chat box and then we have time at the end for Q&A. And I didn't know sure. if you wanted um, us to like answer to one of you to do the Q&A or if you wanted us to do that part. So what we'll do, you can hand that over to Dawn since she's facilitating. But what I will do, if, if oh. Dawn wants to say, um, if you have any questions, go ahead and enter them into the chat with the Q&A. And what okay. I'll do is, um, I mean, Don could facilitate from there since she's facilitating this day. How's that okay. sound? Yeah, and that sounds good. Able to see the questions as well. So, okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to play this video to see if it's good on my end, the quality. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to mute everyone. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and this. as well. Yeah. Yep. I'll do that. So whenever I start this, I'm going to ask if you guys can, well, can you see this right now? Can you guys see this part?
Okay, how is that? I think everyone's self-muted. Can you hear me? It was great. We could hear it. Feedback. It was good. Yeah. I'm sorry, Tika. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you guys hear me? Sounds good. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead. Yes. You can hear me or you can't? Um. Can everyone else hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Kelly. I, I don't can hear you, it. Eugene. Okay, so it seems as though Tinka's having technical difficulties with her yeah. internet. So that's what I noticed too, Eugene. Okay. Well, it's a good thing I saved the day, right? No. <laughs> I'm dead. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I have to call in because my internet is crappy on here. So, like, I can see everybody. I just did. Okay, so we have people joining already. It looks like so we have 20 that have joined. I got a quick question so with the video. It's not allowing me to wind back. Okay, so stop. I put stop Can showing. So under sharing, Eugene, Don, that's Don, where you Don. go. Sorry, sorry, Tinka. Don, can you show that again? 1443. Okay, thank you. That's when the credits start. So just stop when the credits start. Okay. Is there a specific time when you want it to be played? Just from the very beginning? I think yeah. that's fine. That works. Yeah. All right. Um, 
It's 102. We have some attendees. Um, so I think we'll wait just a few more moments. And then we'll start. I have a question. I, I'm not introducing Ruth and Alexander until after the video, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay, so for those that um, have the daily reminders with your um, Outlook email, calendar, whatnot, and even from the SITRIP report, can you guys somehow manage to um, mute all that just so there's no interruptions if, if you are presenting under the health board? So if you're not speaking, please mute yourself, please. I'm not sure if that is um, an option for uh, the GPT LHB staff. They can mute themselves. Okay. Yeah, but if, if they are presenting, um, there might be a a notification that might pop up and interrupt the the meeting. Okay. You can just check yeah, your um, email. Yeah. Email. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, it looks like we have some attendees. I think we probably should go ahead and get started. Um, okay, so hello, everybody. My name is Tinka Duran. I'm the director of the prevention programs under the Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Health Board. And um, we're happy to have you here today. Um, we have some um, exciting um, presenters for the next three days. Um, why we're excited for this virtual conference, we're also disappointed that you are unable, that we're unable to meet with you guys in person um, as we um, recognize the health risks of COVID-19 that's currently in the pandemic is that's going on. Um, we also want to recognize and acknowledge those that are affected by COVID-19 and keep them in our thoughts and prayers. So um, please wear a mask, social distance, and stay safe. Um, I also want to um, thank our prevention program staff for their dedication, passion, and commitment to their respective programs. And getting this conference together, it's been a lot of work. It's been a team effort, and um, I just truly appreciate them. And just to let you know who those people are, it's Eugene, Eugene Gallego, Gina Johnson, Deanna Swan, Richard Musso, Don Arkinson, Kelly LeBeau. I think I've got everybody. And Gina Johnson, did I say Gina? All right, well, again, thank you. We have a wonderful, and passionate team. They um, will go beyond and above. And um, it's really the teamwork of these guys that are making this presentation and this, this webinar and conference um, happening today. Um, again, like I said, we have some exciting presenters for the next three days. Um, some of our key keynotes um, today is Ruth Frazier and Alexander Beck. Um, they're going to talk about the lady Ganga, I never can say this, Ganga and the journey of Michelle Baldwin. And I apologize if I mess that up. Don's very good at that, um, pronouncing it way better than I. Um, and please don't forget tomorrow, we will have Rodney Herring. He will be talking about indigenous cancer research activities. These are our keynotes. We do have many other presenters um, that will be here, but we just want, I just want to go over the keynote. And then on Thursday, we have um, Dr. Mary Milroy, she'll be talking about breast cancer care in, in an uncertain world. So again, we have some exciting presenters um, in the next three days, and we hope that you're able to join all three days. Um, just to clarify, during the presentation, attendees, um, Eugene Gallego will be muting everybody. You can always type into the chat box. Um, when the presentations are over, 
So Eugene can unmute um, all the participants and um, you are also then, if he unmutes you, you will also need to unmute yourself in order to talk. But we welcome you to type in the chat box um, and that would be great. Um, we also will be doing an evaluation each day. We have some amazing prizes that we'll be um, giving out for um, those that complete the um, evaluation. Um, you're invited to enter into a daily drawing for a door prize to show appreciation for your time and feedback. To be entered into this drawing, please provide your name and mailing address at the end of the form. We will put the link in the chat box for you guys to be able to um, then click on that and complete the out evaluation. We'll put that in closer to the end of today. Um, the Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board will not have access to your name and mailing address. <clears throat> Excuse me. Only our external learning partners, Asset Inc., will see your survey responses. So no one outside of Asset Inc. will see any identifying information. Um, again, so please complete the evaluation and they will pick a name and we'll announce it tomorrow of the person that won the exciting prize. We've got some great prizes, Pendleton um, bags that are very nice. I'll try and throw some pictures of the door prizes in the chat box. Um, so with that, um, I think that's all I have. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dawn Arkinson and she will um, introduce our first keynote speaker and talk about that. Thank you. So before we begin, I'll go ahead and start with the prayer for everyone. Um, so initially, whenever we start our conferences, we did this through through person and we would always have someone uh, delegated to um, offer a prayer for everyone, for everyone's safety, especially during this time of uncertainty. We had an elder lined up, but unfortunately he was unable to make it. So today I'll be saying the prayer and I'll be um, saying the prayer in my in my native tongue. So if everyone can um, join with me for prayer. Hotakashila ampetukile lila wopila tonka ichichiapi. Unkashila ampetukile washtekte naha hechel unkia dayankte. Naha dagani shicha ekteshni to kashila ampetukile lila oyate ki ushimakila po naha kuje COVID 19. Lila, we chose on we we chose on inkte oyate kile to kashila duaki yuhalo wo anglake naha lila wo yikcha washte kakinkte to kashila le okola kiche daku washtekte yuhapo to kashila we chakchala na we nukchala naha koshkalaka na we koshkalaka lila we chose on inkte to kashila naha makakile ungloni chapi to kashila ungpaga peshni. Chamushi lapo to Kashla, Hoye Wayalo to Kashla, Nami Chukuelo to Kashla, Medakwe Oyasi. So at this time, I'll go ahead and turn the controls over to Don, and she'll be facilitating today's um, conversation meeting. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all for joining us again today. And, uh, from wherever you're joining us from today, I will ask you to grab a tissue and join us on a journey that takes us across the world to the Ganga River in India. You can play it now, Eugene.
I did. What a powerful video. I cry every single time I see it. Um, so next, I would like to introduce introduce Ruth Frazier, who is the mother of Michelle Baldwin, along with Alex Beck, who is Michelle Baldwin's son, as they speak on behalf of Michelle's legacy. Her cause is ending deaths from cervical cancer worldwide. And she went to India for six weeks to stand up and paddleboard down half the Ganga River. Ruth and Alex, take it away. Thank you so much, Don and Tinka. I am delighted that you all found us. We're here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and um, had our first a historic snowstorm also. So it's kind of a good thing we can do virtual because we couldn't make it to South Dakota. So let me give you a little of the backstory now <clears throat> about the Starry Ganga expedition and all the Michelle did. As soon as we get to meet the presenter, then we'll be able to shoot, share our screen. Unmuted. Unmuted. So if someone can make the presenter, that would be great. Unmuted. Eugene, do you want me to do that or can you do that? Thank you. All right. So can everyone see this? Okay, okay. great. Now, if everybody's had a chance to take a breath, <clears throat> um, imagine you were given <clears throat> six months to live. And that during part of that time, you were gonna be very sick. What would you do? That's what Michelle was faced with. She was a very ordinary woman. She was an EMT. She had just been accepted into the first class of paramedics at the University of New Mexico. And she had this extraordinary idea. And that was, as you saw, to paddle 700 miles down the Ganga River in India <clears throat> while she was given a very serious stage for cancer uh, prediction. And when she was given that, as you saw in the film, Michelle did look at her doctor and say, is that your last doctor? So she had been treated um, several times, but why was she dying at that point was because she had not had a pap test for 10 years. <clears throat> she was a medical person and uh, she ignored the symptoms done as so many women when Michelle was 19 she had traveled the length and breadth of India by herself and it was a transformative trip she worked with Mother Teresa for a while she worked with all kinds of causes throughout India and she found Buddhism she returned then to India several times the rate of death from cervical cancer, as you heard her say, is 74,000 a year versus 4,000 in the United States. And again, it's twice as prevalent in Native American and Alaska Native communities. Why, <laughs> why on earth do this trip with only such a short time of life left? Well, she wanted to focus awareness from in India on a cervical because she also knew that the death rate there is so much higher. She wanted to make a film that would live on beyond herself. She was pretty sure she would never see the film herself. And she wanted to leave a lasting legacy for her three children. Now, I'm not sure she knew that her, her son and I looking at her film were going to cry every time we see it, but that was Michelle. And this 
incredible woman wanted to do something never done before. A few problems to overcome before going to India. She had six weeks to plan and fund the journey. And when she described her idea to me, I had one question for her. And that question was, may I go with you? <clears throat> she quickly said, Mother, you've never wanted to go to India. And I said, I want to see India the way you do it. So off we did. She needed to find a filmmaker who also perhaps could be a navigator and certainly a bodyguard. And we found that with wonderful Nat Stone. Nat was famous as a canoeist who had traveled the entire length of the Mississippi River by canoe and, and wrote a book about it. The next problem was Nat needed a canoe, obviously. He had 18 foot long oars, but he could not send his own canoe on planes after 9-11. So off Michelle and Nat went to Hardwire in India, where they got a beautiful uh, canoe donated. And in classic Michelle Baldwin fashion, she found a beautiful painter who made her starry Ganga canoe a work of art. This is how they traveled with all of their worldly things that they took on the river. And there is Nat with his 18 foot long oars. And here's how Nat did a lot of his filming about Michelle. You can imagine with 18 foot long oars too, he could be much faster than she was. So he often would, would uh, row circles around her. And off they went to India to do half of the Ganges River. Ganges is the word that non-Hindus um, call the river. The river itself was named after the goddess Ganga, and I'll tell you a bit more about that. It is home to 400 million people along its banks. And it's not a sacred river, it is the goddess itself. It has almost never been traveled the length of it. People go across it all the time, but not up and down. And so even finding any map of the river was extremely difficult to do. And particularly, the maps they ended up with were done before the monsoons. So Michelle would come out to a part of the river here, the rapids, as you saw her going at the very start of the river all the way down on her inflatable ultralight um, paddleboard, and then on to very wide, very large parts of the river. She dressed very modestly. As you can imagine, India is a very conservative country, and um, she didn't dress like she would as a paddleboarder in California or even on our Rio Grande in New Mexico. There were uh, only three times that she had to really come off and could not go through the river, and at that point, uh, local community people were happy to portage her canoe and the paddleboard around a bridge. But off she would go for 10 to 12 hours a day, paddling and paddling here behind the beautiful uh, iconic Taj Mahal behind her. Through the most beautiful Indian villages you can imagine, alive with color, alive with people doing all the things that they cherish this river for under rickety very rickety bridges paddling paddling 10 to, again 12 hours a day often by moonlight there was one serious problem on the river and you can see i indicated that the uh, paddleboard was inflatable so that she could put it into a suitcase that normally would fit a snowboard but they were invited because of the, some of the press that she had gotten, and she'd been on television, to attend the funeral of a woman who had died in childbirth. And you can see here, uh, maybe, um, Michelle's paddleboard got a little close to the funeral pyre and popped a hole. That would have ended the trip right there because she only had one board and one patch. So the entire group of uh, people at the funeral ceremony, the men all gathered to help Nat, and one man took off to get some more of the adhesive, and soon she was back on the river. At night, they most often would stay on an island in the middle of the river in their tents, away from the noise of the small towns. 
And often a sadhu, a holy man, would come and having either heard or wondering who is this person, come and offer a prayer. And Michelle and Nat were always very grateful for the prayers. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner could be eaten on the paddleboard. I had joined her and had the sag wagon. So occasionally, every two or three days, Michelle would get off the water and come for a cold shower and a wonderful time in a stretch out bed. And I mentioned she was a Buddhist. Well, one might say she was a little bit of a bad Buddhist because I can tell you a cold beer after 12 hours of paddling on the river was very well received. Uh, Michelle loved the fact that there were incredible animals along the river and she was uh, one of the rare ones to see the endangered Gangetic dolphin. But I could also tell you she got very excited when a grasshopper hopped on her board and rode along for several hours. She exchanged a ride with a man who had a camel and gave him a stand a paddleboard lesson. She would love when the men in the morning would come out to wash their water buffaloes and smile and be happy with her. She even found a color coordinated sacred cow. The Ganga River is uh, one of the long rivers in the United in the world, but it's also considered one of the most polluted. Nonetheless, the Indians find it sacred, as did Michelle, and she swam almost every day in the river. As news and press conferences that we did along the way came, more and more people would gather to watch her come in or to watch her take off, and always the kids loved to stand on her board. Again, finally. 700 miles later to the sacred city of Varanasi. Varanasi is famous for, with Indians because it is the place where you want to be cremated or you want your remains to go into the river because you reach a new level of, it's called moksha, or you go to nirvana, all of your sins are washed away. Michelle had always wanted to go to Varanasi but thought she would get there in her lifetime. And that became the destination of where she wanted to go. There are 88 Ghats temples along Varanasi, which is a very old and ancient city. And in she came late at night after a very long day of paddling. <clears throat> Where did the name uh, Lady Ganga come from? She had called her whole expedition Starry Ganga because not only is Ganga a goddess, she's also the Milky Way. So there's a great association with stars and Ganga. And a beautiful ceremony was done for Michelle as she arrived in Varanasi. And when she stepped off her paddleboard, she said, I'm now Lady Ganga. The next day, she took her very last stand-up paddleboard ride just to feel and appreciate the 25 days that she had spent. Um, she did a major uh, press conference in Delhi. And just a funny little aside. Um, a, a young man, a journalist who was there, rushed off at the end of her presentation and one of the doctors on the panel knew him and went out and the young man said, I, I didn't like what she had to say and the doctor said, why not? And he said, she kept talking about a test that I don't want my wife to have and the doctor said, why not? And he said, the journalist said, my wife doesn't drink, why would she have a PAPST test? So what's in a word? And now I would like to turn this over to her son, Alexander Beck. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ruth Frazier, or as I like to call her, Grammy. Um, I was 17 when my mom passed away, and you may have been able to tell by the various haircuts that I had in the video you just watched that I had a lot of growing up to do. Well, I'm 26 now and I've had time to reflect on just what she accomplished with her trip. Um, before I get into this, I wanna address the major criticism that my mom had. Um, before she left, there were people that didn't even know our family that heard about this and criticized her for leaving her family to go do a trip before she passed away. But she had the entire support of all of her family and we knew that the cause that she was campaigning for and the journey that she was going to complete would be much more meaningful than the time that she could spend with us and we were able to get some time with her when she came back to albuquerque now i struggled a lot in high school um but after she passed away i was able to go to college 
and I graduated with a degree in natural resource recreation and tourism in 2016. And I believe that continues her legacy by inspiring people to get outside and have an appreciation for the outdoors, which did happen to heal her spiritually. Now let's do a recap of her accomplishments. She completed 700 miles in 25 days on a paddleboard. I don't know about you, but that's certainly something that I don't think I could accomplish. She set the world's record, the world record for the women's longest journey done on a paddleboard. She had international press coverage. It was very exciting for my family before she left to see her on the front page of Yahoo. And I was so blown away when she did an interview on NPR in Chicago. And she healed her spirit. Although her body was deteriorating on a daily basis, her spirit continued to grow. And I can say that she died peaceful and with a soul that was healed. She faced a lot of adversity before this trip was started though. Originally, three other women, women were supposed to accompany her, but they had concerns about their safety and they pulled out. But my mother, being the enterprising woman that she was, decided to do it anyway. She wouldn't let anything stop her. She also had to find gear and sponsorships. She found sponsorships from Patagonia, and I'll always be grateful for them for their luggage and support. So after she came back, we realized that she had a whole lot of footage from Nat Stone, who was the amazing canoe guide, but we didn't have a film maker. This is where Frederick Lumiere came along. He heard the story on NPR before she left, and he was making a film about HPV, known as Someone You Love, the HPV Epidemic. This may be a film that some of you have seen before. If you haven't, I definitely encourage you to watch that. Um, maybe a little bit after this, though, because it's also very emotional. So after meeting with her in Albuquerque, he decided to have a film just about her. He is working on a future future length film, feature length film for the future. Um, however, filmmaking does take a long time, so we don't expect that to be out anytime soon. Here he is meeting my mom for the first time in her apartment in Albuquerque. Um, they spoke for hours when they first met and they decided that they really did have a story here that he had the talent to draw out and the ability to tell um, her journey in the way that you just saw. You can also see him meeting her dog Momo, um, who was an excellent foot warmer during her final months in bed. So he knew that we needed to make a film, but we didn't have the funding to do it. We launched a Kickstarter with the goal of raising $50,000 for additional funding and a trip back to India to complete the portion of the story centered around Nilza. Um, the Kickstarter launched and we were able to raise three times the end goal, raising $162,000 for the film. Now this outpouring of financial support showed all of us that we really did have something here that could change the world and a message that many people resonated with. The additional funding helped pay for translation into multiple languages which is something that is so important because like we talked about this epidemic or the HPV issue affects other countries a lot more than it does affect people in the United States. Two months after returning from India, my mother passed away. One of her dying wishes was to have a traditional Buddhist open pyre funeral, which we were lucky enough to have conducted in Crestone, Colorado. You can see the beautiful Colorado mountains in the background. The entire filmmaking crew came with us. However, it was only 17 degrees out, so it was a very cold day, a big change from the waters that she had experienced two months er earlier in India. We were very happy to complete this dying wish of hers, although there were a lot of ashes left, and she did want some of them spread in the Himalayas. So if anyone wants to take a trip with me soon, please reach out. And all of this culminated in a beautiful presentation to the United Nations in February of 2016. After returning to India and filming the additional footage with Nilza and spreading my mom's message to 
rural Indian communities. We were contacted by the United Nations four years after um, my mother passed away, completing four years of filming and editing. The United Nations actually changed End Cancer Day that year to End Cervical Cancer Day, and we had an international audience to spread this message to. As you can see in this picture, there's Frederick Lumiere along with my younger sibling getting ready to speak to an international audience. And here you can see me trying to play it as cool as possible so that my younger sibling wouldn't be so nervous to go up and speak in, in front of such a well-esteemed and international crowd. I will say they did an amazing job, by the way. And the cherry on top of this entire experience was the Empire State Building that night lighting up in the colors of cervical cancer awareness. So that's kind of the culmination of many years of hard work and what we consider the um, highlight or the peak of this entire journey, but we're still spreading this message to this day. And this film, along with your help, can continue to change lives. Please go to ladyganga.org to share it with your friends, your family, post it on Facebook, your Instagram. And if you'd like, you can also go to YouTube and type in Lady Ganga Nils's story. So far, this movie and film has been translated into 13 languages, and we want to continue to help it go global for as long as cervical cancer takes lives. Please keep in mind we're all related despite the languages we speak, and saving one life can save the world. I'd like to leave you with some closing thoughts. Stories are more powerful than statistics. As healthcare providers and professionals and people who are very aware of this issue, I'm sure all of you know the statistics, especially how it relates to Native American and Alaskan Native women. However, stories like the one that we just shared with all of you have so much more of a resonating effect when you're talking to someone about their health and keeping track of their health and pap smears. And HPV is a preventable cancer caused by a virus. There is a vaccine. Unlike many other things that we're facing in today's world, this is completely preventable. The young people that are going to deal with so many issues in the world today don't need to have another thing to worry about when it could be prevented. So please encourage all of the people in your lives who have young children to have them receive the Gardasil vaccine so they never have to suffer the way that my mom did. And have the tough conversations to advocate for help. This is not just a woman's issue. The only way that women receive this HPV and the resulting cancer that it causes is through men. So men, look after the women, the daughters, the sisters, and the mothers in your life so you don't have to lose them like I did. And you don't have to do a international Kickstarter, raise hundreds of thousands of dollars, and launch a multi-year film project to change the world. Being an advocate on a smaller scale, such as in the grocery store, in elevators, um, to the people that you see post too many times on Facebook, um, can change the world. All of us have the advocate, have the power to advocate for the health of others. Saving one life can change the world. Thank you so much. We're gonna move into questions. I'm going to turn the controls over to Don. Um, for the sake of the conversation, we can ask questions in the chat box or um, make a request to be unmuted and we can unmute and talk in person. Let me go ahead and turn these controls over. And on behalf of both myself and my grandma, thank you so much for spending that time with us. Thank you so much, Alexander and Ruth. Um, they can see us now. Okay. I truly appreciate you both uh, answering the call to be presenters today to be our keynote speakers for our conference. Um, Eugene, are there any questions? As of right now, there isn't any questions, but if people do have questions, and there might be several people that are online right now that are typing in questions, but if you can type them in and 
we will answer accordingly as they come in. And then I'm sharing my email as well. Um, if anyone has questions in the future, if they'd like me to speak or if they want to plan that trip to the Himalayas. Yeah, we might have to do some collaborating there as a program to take that trip with you. <laughs> <laughs> An interesting, just as a side, Nilza wasn't very interested in all of this and she saw the film and then they had it translated into Ladakhi. As you saw, she also spoke English. She said, can I see it again? And they ran back what they had made for, it for her. And she went door to door to door in her village to get all the other women having no idea that she was um, a likely candidate. That's awesome. That's just a, an amazing story. An amazing story. I tell my girls that story. I tell my girls about Michelle and her journey. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful. Well, I'm sure that that was so emotionally gripping that um, people are just stuck in awe right now and they can't think of any questions. Um, however, I put my email there. If anyone wants to follow up, we're more than happy to answer any questions about the logistics or if anyone has similar projects. Um, we do kind of have a good connection of healthcare providers now, and we've built up a network over the last eight years. So always keep us in mind if you have any sort of um, resource questions or need any sort of assistance in that way. Um, other than that, we'll wait maybe 10 more seconds before we go ahead and sign off. And thanks everyone for your time today. And also we do have, uh, it's not so much of a question, but it's a comment from one of our um, partners with Acid Inc. Uh, not a question, but tell them thank you so much for sharing their uh, family story. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Don, if you want to go ahead and um, start with our next presentation. Okay, so next we have um, Eugene Gallego, who is the program manager of the Great Plains Colorectal Cancer Screening Initiative, and he will give a brief update of the uh, of the program, as well as Kelly LeBeau, who is the program manager for our Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program, who will also give a brief update. Thank you, Don. Um, and I'll go ahead and pull my screen up so that everyone will be able to see uh, my presentation. Okay, show my screen. All right. Um, for those that do have their webcam, can you give me a thumbs up if you see my screen? Right on, cool. All right, so we'll go ahead and begin. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. For those who don't know, and um, Don already may have introduced myself, I am Eugene Gallego, and I'm currently the program manager for the Great Plains Colorectal Cancer Screening Initiative here at the uh, Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board. Now you might hear me say Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board and it's like, wait, that is what happened to Tribal Chairman's Health Board. Well, we switched her name, so I'm trying to get used to that myself. So uh, GPCCSI has, um, is, is a program that began in 2015 under the Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board. Let me go ahead and advance my slide. Um, GPCSI has been working closely with tribes in the Great Plains region, which is North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, to reduce the high incidence and mortality rates of colorectal cancer screening by increasing colorectal cancer education, screening of the, the fecal immunochemical testing, the fecal occult blood testing, and colonoscopies, and increasing evidence-based interventions. Since the beginning of GPCCSI um, has, since the beginning, GPCCSI has seen an increase of screening and education through each of our subawards, 
and their initiatives and implement implementations that they do. So I want to say that I had the honor to serve such amazing tribal facilities across the Great Plains region, and I saw much great work in reducing the high incidence and mortality rate of colorectal cancer, which has plagued our Great Plains tribal communities. So, so much work and effort has been put into their initiatives and I'm deeply honored and humbled to have worked with each and every one of them. So, but regrettably with that being said, there will not be a continuation of another five year uh, colorectal cancer grant through the Great Plains um, Colorectal Cancer Screening Initiative. So GPCCSI does understand that the that the request for re request for proposal for the grant was extremely competitive, and the chances of another award of the grant could be denied. So GPCCSI has worked continuously on our grant application by working with tribal communities on letters of support, whether that was from tribal health directors, CHRs, and other personnel, as well as trying to extend uh, reach and efforts beyond the Great Plains region. And for that, we, the GPCCSI team, are extremely grateful for all of the hard work that has been put into this grant application. And we also wanna thank each and one of our tribal communities that utilize the funding from our grant cycle to increase uh, the screening rates for colorectal cancer, as well as lowering the high mortality and incident rates among American Indians in the Great Plains region. We couldn't be any happier with, with uh, all of the events and activities that were carried throughout the five years of the program, and we're extremely blessed to be part of it and welcome you into our communities. So with that, I wanna thank every each and every one of our sub-awards and people across the Great Plains region. Currently, GPCCSI is working with tribal communities on extending efforts of colorectal cancer and evidence-based interventions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Each facility or tribal community has received a no-cost extension amendment upon the request. So what this means is due to COVID-19, all the workers that, that um, kind of evolves around the colorectal cancer through the, through the grant, oh, sorry. Let me see here. Through the grant has been extended until November 30th, 2020. This also means that each subaward has extended their final reports and sustainability plans until the 30th of November as well. So we have developed a sustainability template for each facility to sustain their CRC efforts. And we realized that there was a possibility of not being refunded for another five year CRC cycle. Um, which is why we developed these plans during our five years of the grant so that in the event of not being refunded which we currently are at least our sub awards can have a game plan on how to sustain their their efforts implementations of evidence-based interventions and screening rates through uh, the colorectal cancer screening methods provider assessments has been conducted from the start of our initial crc uh, grant cycle each subaward would have our staff sit down with the providers of each subaward facility and go over a uh, co comprehensive checklist to ensure that certain key practices are in place to increase colorectal cancer education and screening. Out of the 20 tribal facilities across the Great Plains region, we have about four facilities to conduct a provider assessments. During these assessments, each facility is provided with a, with a comprehensive toolkit, which entails each detail and aspect of increasing colorectal cancer screening and, and education. The information aggregated is then used by the facility to see where their strong areas, as well as the areas that do need improvement. <clears throat> Excuse me. Due to the fact of, fact that um, the GPCCSI team is ending, the, the, the program is ending. Um, at the end of this year, we would like to push out as much information as possible in regards to colorectal cancer education. So with that being said, GPCCSI will be, dis will be dispersing a ton of fact sheets, brochures, educational items, and potentially new items that will 
will best serve our tribal communities. So for those under the under the subawarded grant, keep an eye out for that. And we'll be reaching out to you as well. So due to COVID-19, we do understand that many communities have been working around the clock with COVID-19 screening and care, and that should take precedence over pretty much everything. So GPCCSI is kindly working with each of the facilities and their needs of pushing more CRC screening to patients during this time of uncertainty, because we do know that since the start of COVID-19, screening has dropped or fell to the wayside. So we discovered that a lot of areas, a lot of areas across the nation have utilized stool based samples in the convenience of their own home in order to reduce the spread of COVID-19 while simultaneously increasing the screening rates. GPCSI CCSI is willing to help our tribal communities by assisting with the, the fecal immunochemical testing and the fecal occult blood testing, the FIT and FOBT by doing a mailing and postage. So this will be done with facilities that do not have funds or resources to push out the, the, the screening methods. And right now I'll go ahead and turn it over to Kelly LeBeau. Give me one second, Kelly, I'm gonna make you the presenter. Thanks Eugene. Thank you. Okay, I think you got controls now. Okay. And before we, we begin, Kelly, we can see your screen and everything's perfect. Okay, great. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, as Don and Eugene mentioned, I my name is Kelly LeBeau, and I am the program coordinator for the Great Plains Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program, um, Honor Every Woman Program. And I just wanted to give some program updates. Um, we uh, in 2017, 16, we were awarded um, through a cooperative agreement with uh, through the Centers for Disease Control. Um, and we are just now entering year four of a five-year cooperative agreement of that co cooperative agreement. Um, we have uh, successfully implemented a pilot project with uh, one of the local uh, women's clinics here in Rapid City and um, and have expanded out to, and initially the pilot project included uh, cervical cancer screening for women ages 21 to 29. It was a very small population. Um, just uh, since we're a new program, uh, we just needed to, um, work together to uh, implement our program in the, excuse me, um, in the clinic. And um, we started that in October, actually it's almost a year to the date, October 28th was when we first started screening uh, those women. And um, so upon the end of our fiscal year in June, um, of 2020, we uh, had successfully implemented that pilot project and uh, shored up our policies and procedures. And so um, we expanded our screening to include breast cancer screening with that clinic um, for the age range of 40 to 64. And then we also expanded the cervical screenings to include uh, women over the age of 30 up to 60. Four. So the total screening population for cervical cancer is 21 to 64. And um, and then with that successful implement, implementation of the pilot project, we also uh, began screening in one of the other local facilities. Um, and that is in its beginning stages. And um, we are working on procedures uh, for that clinic as well, and and that also will be uh, the whole uh, screening ages for 
21 to 64 in, for women in, the, in that clinic as well. And then our plan for the coming year is to expand out to uh, some additional facilities in the Great Plains area with our overall goal being um, to implement our program into each of the tribal and IHS clinics throughout our uh, the Great Plains area, so North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Um, in addition, um, our other component that of our cooperative agreement is working with, um, you heard Eugene mention subawards and uh, implementing evidence-based interventions. Um, we are currently working with 10 facilities um, in primarily in South Dakota and Nebraska right now um, to help those clinics improve their screening rates. And so um, that encompasses uh, provider assessment and feedback, which you heard uh, Eugene mention, and then also um, reducing structural barriers and uh, client reminders, as well as provider re reminders. And, um, and with the implementation of uh, the reducing structural barriers, many of the facilities have pur purchased gas cards um, to provide, to offset the cost of transportation to and from screening since, um, you know, our clinics and uh, can be located, oops, sorry. Oh no, my bad, <laughs> sorry. Um, apologies. Um, anyway, excuse me. And so, um, Throughout the 10, with those 10 facilities, we have uh, seen an increase in screening rates. Um, and uh, just to give you an example, um, one of the clinics that we worked with this last year, um, we were we were on a, a monthly call with them, and um, it's a good example of uh, why you should get screened. Um, but anyways, when they received a call. Uh, that one of the gals that they had referred to uh, for mammogram screening had, uh, they, they gave her the gas card to go get her mammogram. And normally, had she not gotten that gas card, she would, she would not have gone to get screened. And, and um, as fortunate or unfortunate, fortunate that uh, she, was, or she was diagnosed with breast cancer, um, but I, they caught it at an early stage. So, um, you know, definitely screening, screening works. And, that, uh, and that's why we're working with the facilities, you know, to implement screening and patient education and outreach and um, to get our women screened. Um, with the onset of COVID-19, um, you know, like many of you, uh, out there, um, we saw drastic changes in, in our work and our work plans. Um, we had some of our deliverables delayed due to, you know, the restriction of travel. Um, you know, we all began working from home. And, and so these Zoom meetings and uh, go to meetings um, have become our, our norm now. And, uh, and I would say it's working very well. Um, to keep and and we stay in touch with our subawardees in our screening clinics, um, but with that, you know, the screenings were delayed. Um, many of the facilities um, actually either shut down completely or um, did not accept, or they were not taking appointments for annual screenings, and so as a result, those screenings have been delayed. And then, um, but we also worked with uh, CAT Communications to develop some PSAs um, on, through, we developed a radio ad in, in conjunction with um, the colorectal program and uh, put some PSAs out there on uh, that you might have seen if you subscribe to our uh, tribal Great Plains Tribal Leaders Health Board, I'm getting used to that as well, um, 
on our Facebook and um, social media platforms. And then uh, I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And um, usually, like uh, last year, uh, we, we had a float in the uh, parade uh, for the Black Hills powwow. And uh, we actually got second last year, and so we were we were so looking forward to to being able to to spread awareness and and um, enter a, another float this year. And so we were we were pretty bummed that uh, the powwow was canceled, and you know as as a result of COVID. And so we've had to think, be creative, and and uh, so uh, trying to spread the message. We put out some social media posts for Breast C Cancer Awareness Month. Um, we also sent uh, pink packages out to our partners. Um, if you're, if our partners are out on this call, um, you might have already received those. Where you know we just sent some fact sheets for on breast cancer myth bus myth busters, um, some pens, magnets, um, and just to help them also spread awareness on, on the benefits of screening. And uh, and then we also uh, presented in collaboration with the Good Health and Wellness Program on, on uh, a webinar that they had uh, at the middle of the month. And that is all I have for updates. Thank you. And I will turn it back over to you, Dawn. Thank you for those updates, Kelly. Much appreciated. And Eugene. Um, so we are ahead of schedule. Um, but I will go ahead and introduce the next uh, presenter, which uh, who I believe is Dr. Milroy, correct? Am I correct on that? No. Okay. No. The next presenter is Asset Inc. on their evidence-based intervention and evaluation and sustainability planning. Um, yep. In the handout, there is an uh, agenda if you guys would like to look at that as well. Yep. I yeah. am look I'm, I'm looking at the agenda, and I do see Asset Inc. I just didn't see an actual name of who's presenting. Is that you, Rachel? Okay, so and Rachel goes over to to Ashley, and I'm not sure which one of you, Ashley or Rachel, that are presenting. But I've sent the controls over to Ashley. But if you want them over to you, Rachel, I can go ahead and send them over. Okay, so it's currently with um, Ashley. Okay, so next is Ashley and Rachel from Asset Inc. And this session seeks to introduce evidence-based interventions on how best to evaluate and planning for EBI sustainability. EBIs are defined by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention as strategies, strategies and interventions such as providing transportation that work to improve the quality of cancer screening in addition to increasing the number of people screened. So take it away, Ashley and Rachel. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out where all of my thing, all of my controls and stuff are. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Ashley Kitchen and I'm a research associate um, at Asset Inc. located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I wanna just say thank you to the health board um, for organizing this conference and then also to the other presenters um, for sharing their stories and knowledge that we're gonna hear over the next couple of days. Um, so Asset and the Health Board have had uh, more than a six-year partnership and working relationship. Um, so I'm currently a part of the evaluation team for the Great Plains Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program, um, or the Honor Every Woman program that Kelly just gave an update about. Um, and then I'm also here with here virtually with my colleague, um, Rachel Eng, who will also introduce herself. Thanks, Ashley, and hello, everyone. Nice to be with you today. So I'm Rachel Eng. I'm also a research associate at ASSET, 
and I am on the evaluation team uh, with Eugene for the colorectal cancer screening initiative. So I'm excited um, to be here today. Thanks. So um, as Don mentioned, the section kind of or session um, seeks to introduce evidence-based interventions or um, EBIs or EBIs. Um, provide a short description of evaluation and example evaluation tools to measure and track success in the implementation of EBIs, and also discuss um, sustainability planning and how to sustain activities kind of um, after a project um, ends. So as we go through the presentation, um, feel free to type any questions in the chat box. Um, so our plan is to leave time at the end of our presentation to sort of answer any questions or have a discussion or anything um, that you guys might have a question about. So um, first, we wanted to give a brief and um, brief definition of what EBIs are. Um, so EBIs are defined by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention as strategies and interventions, such as providing transportation, that work to improve the quality of cancer screening in addition to increasing the number of people screened. So there are four, there are currently four EBIs that the CDC um, recommends and provides guidance on. And these include reducing structural barriers, provider assessment and feedback, provider reminder and recall, and patient reminder and recall. So reducing structural barriers um, are often sort of seen as helping patients kind of navigate those non-economic burdens um, that kind of make it difficult for people to access cancer screening. So that might be modifying hours of service to meet clients' needs if they can't fit, you know, their appointments within the window of the traditional um, hours of service, doing mobile, mom mobile mammography vans, um, or giving patients, you know, gas cards to get to a clinic for a cancer screening, especially if the clinic is um, pretty far away from them. Um, provider assessment and feedback is, um, you know, includes both evaluating provider performance in delivering um, or offering screening to clients and then also presenting providers with information about their performance and um, screening services. So the feedback can, you know, describe the performance of a group of providers um, or an individual provider. And then provider reminder and recall is often reminders that inform healthcare providers that it's time for a client's cancer screening test. So that would be the reminder um, part or that the client is overdue for screening. So that would be the recall part. So the reminders can be provided in different ways, such as in client charts or by email. Um, and then patient reminder, sorry, that was provider reminder. Um, and then patient reminder and recall would be sort of written or telephone messages advising people that they're due for screening. So these would be sort of letters or postcards or emails, um, and then sending out, you know, like the automatic automated messages, either voice, sorry, that was my cat, either voicemail um, or text messages. And then we're gonna show a quick one minute video. Um, hopefully it will work from the CDC and the National Association of Chronic Disease Directors that briefly discuss these EBIs. Screen out cancer. As a health system leader, you know that regular screening for breast, cervical, and colorectal cancer can save lives. But did you know that you can screen even more people and save even more money for your health system at the same time? By using evidence-based strategies, you can boost your screening rates, reduce costs, and improve the quality of the care your system provides. For example, you can increase appropriate cancer screenings by making it easier for people to get screened. Consider offering alternative hours, mobile clinics, and help with transportation. Send reminders to patients who are not up to date. You should also send reminders to doctors to ensure screening occurs. Please take a moment and review our evidence-based strategies and download our fact sheet so you can start increasing screening rates in your system today. 
Let's get more people screened. The cost is too great not to. Sponsored by NACDD with support from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevent. So that, I'm glad that worked. Um, so that was just a brief sort of overview of EBI's, um, specifically from the CDC. And then we wanted to briefly talk about before we get into kind of the tools and how to evaluate these EBI's, just briefly um, talk about sort of EBI's and some data that shows that these interventions can help, can work and then also um, talk about evaluation and just give a brief overview of what evaluation um, is and what we mean when we talk about evaluation. Um, so the, this graphic kind of presents information on EBI's and provides data on why these interventions work in helping to screen more people. Um, so as you can see here, the CDC states that using multiple evidence-based interventions increase screening rates um, so I know, for example, for the Honor Every Woman program, um, subwards choose more than one um, EBI to work on. And so that is in um, hopes of sort of increasing those screening rates by using multiple interventions. Um, so for example, there's, uh, the CDC states that 24% um, increase in adults up to date with colorectal cancer screening after using patient navigators, client reminders, and provider reminders. So using two of those four EBIs. Um, and then on the right, the graphic shows the benefits of using patient navigators to work with patients uh, to overcome barriers and understand you know, the medical system. So their support can also help and help in help getting patients um, get the cancer screenings and the follow-up care that they need. So um, before we get into kind of evaluating EBIs, we wanted to briefly introduce the concept of evaluation and what it means in this context. Um, so evaluation generally is the process of kind of systematically collecting and analyzing data and then using those results um, to answer questions in order to improve effectiveness and efficiency. So it's an effective way to improve and account for public health actions and is the process of obtaining feedback to better serve um, people impacted by your program or clinic. So generally the, pro the evaluation process includes developing evaluation questions and statements um, developing measures, collection methods, um, and kind of establishing an evaluation timeline that's in line with your project timeline. Um, there are a variety of evaluation frameworks, including the CDC's framework um, for program evaluation and public health, which you see on the left, um, and also the American Indian Higher Education Consortium's um, Indigenous Evaluation Framework that kind of draws on traditional values, knowledge, and histories of tribal people in the US. So there are uh, many different ways to sort of go about doing evaluation, but overall it's sort of an effective way to help improve um, your program or you know, improve one aspect of maybe your um, clinic's processes that you would um, like to sort of evaluate the results of a certain program or something like that that you're doing. Um, so examples of data might include, you know, baseline screening rates um, and PAP tests at the beginning of a project period, and then looking um, kind of at those um, rates kind of at the end of a period, whether it be at the end of a fiscal year um, or, you know, at the end of a project. So with that, I will hand it over to Rachel. Great, thanks Ashley. So what we wanted to do next was offer a couple of different data collection tools that we've um, helped develop with um, GPCCSI and um, the Honor Every Woman program. And so we're going to talk about four examples of data collection tools to track the interventions and to evaluate them as well. So we'll go um, into each one of these in detail. Could you do the next slide please Ashley? Thank you. 
So the first, um, EBI is reducing structural barriers. So the tool that we decided to offer an example, as an example, is the patient knowledge questionnaire. And this is a tool that collects information about a patient's knowledge of cancer and screening strategies. And this could be a good tool to use if your clinic is providing information about screening practices and you could do a pre-questionnaire to understand patient's knowledge and then a post-questionnaire after you do the intervention. So an example of this is um, with the GPCCSI, the Roland colon is an intervention that um, many clinics have used and it's a way to uh, learn about colorectal screening. And so there is a pre and post survey with that intervention to understand the effectiveness of that intervention. And these are really small thumbnail um, screenshots, I know, and we're happy to provide the tools um, if, if people want as a PDF, just to be able to look at them more carefully afterwards. But essentially, um, this questionnaire has questions, um, kind of true or false questions about um, cervical cancer. So that's an example. And then another tool that I'll just verbally describe is perhaps using an enrollment form for a patient and then asking questions about potential barriers. So perhaps transportation, uh, asking questions about if that's a barrier, because if you collect that information and you know that transportation is in fact a barrier, you can come up with different strategies to either get a mammography van out to those folks or a gas card. So having in questions that are um, exploring potential barriers in an enrollment form could help you understand um, how to then overcome those barriers. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so the next EBI is the provider assessment feedback. So the tool that we decided to offer an example as an example is the detailed checklist. So this um, allows clinics to assess the processes that are currently in place. And this could be completed pre and post intervention to understand what actions clinics took to improve screening rates. So um, again, I know this is quite small, but each of these sections that start with the black header corresponds to the patient's experience at various points of a screening process. So that first section is the waiting room. So that um, first box under waiting room says patient completes a questionnaire to provide information on risk status, screening history, and attitudes. So this is a tool to um, help the, the clinic know like, okay, yes, that is something that we did for that patient or, or no, we didn't. Um, the next section is patient check-in. So an example of something you might track is um, staff ask about preventative care and highlight services that are needed or past due. The other sections in this detailed checklist tool are the appointment, checkout, communication beyond the office, and tracking patient compliance. So this is a way that for each individual patient, a clinic can keep, kind of keep track of um, the points of intervention during a screening um, process and afterwards. Thank you. Um, the next, EBI is provider reminder and recall. So the example of the tool will be on the next slide. I couldn't get it to fit all on one slide, but the tool we decided to offer as an example for this one is the chart audit template. And so this gathers information about each patient's screening procedures, and it allows clinics to understand if they're meeting the goals of screening rates that they've set for themselves and really assess the effectiveness of interventions. So if you could um, go to the next slide, please. This is what the chart audit template looks like. And again, I know it's pretty small, but this tool 
would be for information about multiple patients. So in each row here would be one patient and the columns have information about the patient. So the first couple columns are just about them. So their gender, race, and ethnicity. Uh, this is for colorectal screening. Um, and then it has different columns for the different um, screening tools that they may be using. So, you know, maybe they have a colonoscopy or um, these other um, screening tools. So then you, the clinic would put when um, they return the test, the result, and the result date. So this is a tool, um, a data collection tool that you can collect information about multiple patients, as I mentioned, and if they do have these multiple screenings, you can put information uh, in, in multiple boxes. And so this template um, could give clinics information that then they might plug into an electronic health record system that could um, kind of automatically give the clinics a reminder that someone might be due for a test or a follow-up or that sort of thing. And then the next and final tool that we wanted to offer is for the EBI patient reminder and recall. And this is a tracking template that we um, helped create for um, cervical cancer screening um, and breast, breast and cervical cancer. And this tool tracks the screening process for each patient. So whereas the tool I just showed is for multiple patients, this is really a deeper dive into an individual patient and the vaccinations or screenings that they um, might or might not get. So um, to implement and evaluate patient reminders effectively, clinics should be able to identify the population eligible and do for screening and then track responses to reminders and then monitor the screening rate of um, in the eligible population. So I know this is quite small, but the different sections in this tool are um, HPV vaccination. So then there's a row for vaccination one completed, vaccination two completed, and like the date that that might happen, that that happens, and then notes. So, uh, and then the next one is screening for ages 21 through 29. And then like the tool we just showed, this could speak directly again to an electronic health record system and um, clinics can import this data right into an EHR so that um, there's you know, robust information about each patient and uh, their screening. So um, Ashley, did you want to add anything about those tools before we dive into sustainability planning? Um, I didn't have anything to specifically add. I think that they all just are examples. Um, sorry, my cat's in the way. There are all just, you know, examples of different ways that, um, you know, your clinic or program um, can sort of evaluate and also just keep track of the, you know, the clients that they're seeing and patients that they're seeing for these screenings, um, which can also help in a bunch of different ways and especially in clinic processes. Um, so I think, you know, those aren't necessarily the only um, sort of tools for these EBIs, but they are ones that we have helped, um, you know, to create that we've been able to see that, you know, clinics um, appreciate these and trying to keep them also, um, you know, user friendly as far as not being super long and time consuming um, as well for people to use. So making sure that they're also usable. Great. Yeah, thank you for adding that. So if uh, anyone has questions, you can type them into the, the chat box and we're happy to address them um, after this last section of our presentation, which is about sustainability planning, which um, Eugene has already mentioned. And so we're excited to um, explore a little bit more. 
So the definition of sustainability that we're working with is the continuation of a project's goals, principles, and efforts to achieve desired outcomes. So sustainability planning is important because it really gives a clinic a roadmap about how to continue its work and how to continue achieving screening goals, even after maybe a funding source is gone or a program ends. The key steps in sustainability planning process is clarifying a vision, determining what you want to sustain, so like what um, goals you want to sustain or, or aspects of programs, build collaboration, choosing uh, a desired sustainability strategy and method, develop action steps for sustainability, and document and communicate your sustainability success. And this um, may sound like a lot of steps and overwhelming, but we're going to share a couple of resources that we've um, used and have seen to be helpful um, helping clinics do this sustainability planning. So the next slide will talk specifically about clinical sustainability. And clinical sustainability capacity is the ability of an organization to maintain structured clinical care practices over time and to evolve and adapt these practices in response to new information. So, you know, implementation of new practices and clinical settings is affected by, is affected by many factors like um, financial factors, organizational, regulatory, political. Um, so for clinics to maintain the benefits of their EBIs, they need to support them in a number of ways. So having a grasp on these factors like political, organizational can help build capacity for sustainability and long-term success. So one way um, that we have worked with um, clinics around sustainability is using this Clinical Sustainability Assessment Tool, or CSAT, and it is a free online tool. It's developed by the Center for Public Health System Science at the Brown School at Washington University in St. Louis, and there is a link down there. Um, we'll make the slides available afterwards, and you're welcome to check it out. And this tool can help your clinic understand the seven factors that influence uh, a clinic's capacity for sustainability. So um, here are the seven on the screen, um, everything from engaged staff and leadership to workflow integration to monitoring and evaluation. And the assessment tool is a 35 question self-assessment that both clinical staff and stakeholders can take to assess capacity for sustainability. And it just takes 10 to 15 minutes and it can be taken individually or as a group. And 12 people, up to 12 people can complete the group assessment for free. So in the next couple of slides, uh, we just wanted to show examples of questions in the assessment that um, clinic staff and stakeholders would answer through this assessment. So this is one of the seven factors engaged staff and leadership. Um, so it's all about having supportive frontline staff and management within the organization. So then in the assessment, um, folks would, would rate uh, each of the statements, one through five, here on a scale from to little or no extent to a very great extent. And so doing this assessment and reflecting on each of the seven factors will really illuminate kind of where your clinic is where it stands currently in terms of the seven factors. So you can make kind of realistic and appropriate plans um, for sustainability going forward. And it will illuminate kind of what of the seven factors might need a little bit more um, care or focus. So next we wanted to talk about developing a sustainability action plan. Thanks. Um, so these are the steps to developing that plan. Um, assemble a planning team, review your practices goals, your clinic's goals, and then everyone would, you know, take the assessment and then you would re review the results 
and then determine what practice elements need to be maintained, eliminated, or adapted based on those results. And then the next step would be to prioritize the area of sustainability capacity to address first, and then write a sustainability action plan with specific action steps that will be the roadmap for your sustainability planning. So our last slide, we wanted to show just a snapshot of part of that sustainability planning template. Now this is quite small again, but this is around that uh, factor engage staff and leadership. So this is a template that is free through the CSAT website. So for each of the seven factors, uh, you would think about a sustainability objective. And then each of the columns here are for, the first one is steps to achieve objectives. You would write down specific steps. The next column is who will do that work. So to you know, kind of hold the right person accountable who is in charge of doing that step. What does success look like? So um, thinking about evaluation. And then what non-financial resources are needed for this step and where will they come from? So really thinking about, you know, is it about partnership and relationships um, or other kind of non-financial resources? And then finally, the last column is about due date. So being really specific about when certain steps will happen will help uh, when planning for sustainability. So that wraps up sustainability planning. Um, before we kick it over to questions, um, Ashley, did you want to add anything about sustainability planning? Um, I don't think so. I think that you did a great job covering, you know, the kind of general overview. Um, if maybe when we're doing some Q and A, I can send the link. Um, for the CSAT into the chat box, if maybe Dawn can put it into the chat box for all of the attendees, um, just so they could, you know, click on it um, and see the resource kind of right away if they wanted to. I can do that, I think. And oh, if it, go ahead. Uh, it looks like we did have some questions. Uh, let me see. They're okay. kind of hard to see, Don. This is Tinka. Yeah. Um, I haven't pulled up. So okay. this one, um, maybe Dr. Milroy might be able to answer. Has any of the programs used or considered the self-sampling for cervical cancer? Um, this is from Melinda Baderas. This could be helpful with screening numbers, as was mentioned with the colorectal sampling home kit. And you might have to uh, unmute yourself, Dr. Milroy. I'll make sure that you are unmuted as well. Okay. So now you're self muted if you just unmute yourself, Dr. Melroy. Do you see it there under staff? Or you can go under audio. Okay. I was going to say that is go. certainly something <laughs> that we could take a look at. I mean, I, I definitely think it's something that uh, we can meet and explore. Um, you know the how that might be implemented, but that certainly is a good idea and something that would be worth looking at. And this is Kelly, and I'm not familiar familiar with any of the clinics, at least um, the ones that we've been working with uh, for Evie's that they haven't, as far as I know, they haven't implemented that. Yeah, I'm not familiar with a place that has either, but I certainly think it's something that we could do some research on and take a good look at it. Uh, I'm actually not familiar with a clinic that's currently using that either. Great. Um, thank you guys. Yeah, I, I've heard about it. Um, I have, I don't know of any local clinics in our area in the Great Plains that are using self-sampling for cervical cancer screenings. 
um, but definitely something we could look at. Um, another question from Melinda is, are there templates from the Great Plains available in the EHR system on our PMS? So Melinda, um, I'm not sure what exactly what templates you're asking. I'm gonna unmute yourself. Now you're self-muted if you would like to, oops, wrong one. Okay, Melinda, if you'd like to unmute yourself, you can, as I don't know what templates from the Great Plains, what templates you're talking about. So if you want to type some more in the chat, in the question box, you can definitely do that. Um, the One other question, um, Don answered, but um, from Renee Yuppie, she said, can you email the slides? And Don asked, which slides, Renee? We will have all the PowerPoints um, available. Um, after this, and we can in PDF form, and we can share those with all the attendees. Hello, um, Tinka. If I can yes. uh, up with the uh, available in EHR systems or RPMS. Um, previously, the Great Plains Colorectal Cancer Screening Initiative has um, the has reached out to um, speakers from. I believe it was the Spirit Lake Nation who gave an overview on uh, EHR, RPMS, things to that nature. Um, what I can do is I can provide a, I believe we have a recording over that, and it can provide some more information on types of templates that you can utilize with any type of EHR or RPMS and that in, in regards to that. Thank All you. right. Thank you, Eugene. Um, let's see. The question for screening, can we put them in templates for providers to question? So that's Melinda's, um, she, about the templates for RPMS and the EHR. She wanted to know about the questions for screening. For screening, can we put them in the templates? Can we put them in templates for providers to question? Um, Melinda, I know in IHS they have what's called eye care, and if that's what you're talking about, again, you are unmuted. You can unmute yourself and ask the question live if you like. But um, there is what's called eye care if you're talking about client provider reminders. Um, where it pops up um, to the provider to remind them that um, the person's due for whatever screening, a colorectal cancer screening, a breast cancer screening, or whatever screening it is. Um, not, we do know that not all facilities um, utilize eye care. Um, it can be a bit cumbersome for facilities to use. There is training um, from the Great Plains IHS um, area office. Um, you can definitely reach out to them, or if you want, I think you could reach out to me and I could find out who that specific person is. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Is there any other questions? Melinda said thank you, so I think we answered her question. <laughs> okay. So, Don, do you want to talk about, um, we are running a bit early, which is fine. Um, do you want to do any closing remarks, talk about the evaluation? Um, and I will put the evaluation link in the chat box. Yes. So, uh, first of all, thank you, Rachel and Ashley, for that wonderful presentation. Thank you for joining us today, and uh, thank you for everybody who took the time to join us today on uh, the web the webinar. Um, Tinka will put in the chat box the link to the evaluation. She's going to put that in the chat box so that you can have access to it. 
And as she stated at the beginning, before we got started today, that um, everybody who fills out the evaluation, their names will go in a, into, um, we'll be doing a drawing, a door, door prize drawing. Um, evaluation drawing will be announced tomorrow, correct, Tinka? Eugene? Yes, so what we will do is we will aggregate, aggregate everyone's evaluations and um, Rachel and uh, some of the staff will be providing the, the, the winners from our drawings for those that have filled out the evaluation. Okay, excellent. So um, again, we thank you all for joining us today and we are running fairly early. Um, and we look Hold forward to a moment. I am putting Rachel puts the evaluation in the chat box. So I am going to share that with everybody. Now, um, I'd like to figure out how to do that. Could I jump in, Tinka, and just um, say something? So if you want to be entered into the drawing for tomorrow, please fill out the feedback form by noon Mountain Time tomorrow, and then we will randomly choose someone and announce it um, tomorrow at the start of the conference. And then we will be asking for feedback after each day. So we hope that you provide that feedback uh, for each of the days. That will be really helpful for us to improve future events. So thanks. Thank you, Rachel. And the link to the SurveyMonkey evaluation form is in the chat box. So please feel free to copy that or click on it. I think you might have to control click. But um, click on that and fill out our survey for us, please. Is there any other questions, comments? Okay. Oh, I think there was one other one. Let's see if we answered that one. Yep. So it's asking about the email of slides. Yes, we will be emailing the the slides after all presentations are done and send them out to everyone that is um that is joining and participating in the um in the the conference call today yep there is one other question this is from eunice hollowhorn she said this is eunice we use i care to run a query to find out who is due we send reminder letters um, you need to learn how to run i care because modifications will need to be done so um, Eunice definitely has some expertise in using iCare. Um, definitely, I'm sure you could reach out to her, Melinda, or if you um, would like, um, we can get you in touch with her or the Great Plains Area IHS, again, does training on iCare for you and staff. So. Any other questions? I think that's it. Okay, so we got some people, uh, Laurel Hawkins, um, she's um, having difficulties to get the link to work. So um, if you can, Laurel Hawkins, uh, please provide your email within the chat. And what we can do is follow up with the email to those that provided their email and follow up with the um, the link and we can do that in the chat as well. And I believe Tinka is sending that to to everyone who's having difficulties. Awesome, thank you, Laura. So I put it in the questions and I also put it in the chat box. You might have to copy and paste it into, um, into like Google Chrome or into your Internet Explorer in order to reach that. So just copy and paste it into your um, 
your Google Explorer or whatever platform you use, and it should take you there. Yeah, and we're also getting other people with difficulties with the survey. Um, so, like I said, um, we'll follow up with those that are having difficulties um, with the survey. Um, we got your emails here um, within the chat, and we'll follow up with that survey link for you. Yep, so we have um, Aaron Sweezy. He said that, uh, yes, um, I copy and paste it into the Google Chrome, and it worked for me. Yeah, technology on my <laughs> side for once. So, <laughs> yep, if you copy and paste the link into Google Chrome, it, it should bring you directly to the survey. You just have to delete the, the little characters before HTTPS, and then after feedback, those just delete those out. Thank you, Kelly. Awesome, and um, we'll also be following up just, just in case if that copy and paste is not working, we do have your emails and we can follow up with the, with the email of the evaluation survey feedback form. I think we got a... No, that's pretty much it for the questions. All right, Don, do you want to just go ahead and close us out then, please? Yeah. Uh, so again, thank you everybody who attended today and we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow at one o'clock sharp. And um, you all have a great late afternoon and evening. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay warm, wash your hands, do all the things because we want to see you again tomorrow. For sure. Thank you, Don. We'll see you guys all tomorrow. Ashley and Rachel, can you stay on and the rest of the staff, please? Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. So we got um, several more attendees that are still logged in. So we'll give it a few more minutes. That, that sounds good. Thank you, Dr. Melroy. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you. Um, actually, I have a conflict tomorrow. I'm grading for the School of Medicine. But I'll be on the entire time on Thursday. So I'm really sad okay. I have a conflict. I was, we're doing OSCE ones from about eight to five tomorrow. So I may be shell shocked by Thursday. <laughs> but I'm protesting, <laughs> apologize. But I'll be on right from the beginning on Thursday. So I thought the conference was really well done. And so congrats to all of you guys. It was very interesting, real informative. So thank you. So all right. Thank you. We appreciate it. Nope. Thank you. Mary. We still have several people who are on as attendees. I wonder if there's a way we could Tinka, did you want to um, go ahead and uh, should we all get out and then meet in teams? I think that would be a better use of this. I think we need to have Rachel and Ashley on. Yep, and I think they do have team. Do you guys have teams, Rachel and Ashley? We, I think we can join someone else's. Like if you guys send us the link okay. um, yep. in our emails, we can join it that way. Yep, so Tinka, if you want, I can invite everyone that is on the staff section. Okay.
onto the team. Right, right on. Okay, sounds good. good. All right, we will join when we get the link. Okay, so, if that doesn't work, I'll send you a Zoom link. Okay. 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 Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.